Excellent. Hi there. We're going to be talking about LARP as entertainment of the future. But before we get started with the actual talking, we're going to do a little experiment with you. Now, I want you all to imagine that instead of us going up and you, you think, what's going on? Who are these people? Why are we listening to them? Are they university professors? Because then we should be quiet. No, they're not. We can just check our iPhones. Before into going that state of mind, we want you to do something a little bit different. We're going to exit the stage and we're going to enter it again. And you're going to pretend that we're fucking rock stars. And you're at a rock concert. And you're going to go absolutely fucking crazy when we get on stage. Can you do that? Yes. I ask, can you do that? Yes. Excellent. Now, give a big hand to our next speakers, Agata Schwistak and Klaus Rostel. You've just been part of a very simple LARP. Hello, my name is Agata Schwistak and I'm professional queen of cool. And that means that I am facilitating cool experiences for people from all around the world uh, and allow them to participate in amazing tales. My name is Klaus Rostel, and since I was introduced to you just before, I'm not going to say more about myself, but Schwistak didn't join the College of Wizardry two years ago. She helped create it, and that's a big important difference. Now. Before we talk about what LARP is and why it's a good thing, we're going to give you some examples of LARPs. Legion, the Siberian story, is a survival tale about Czech soldiers going through Siberia back home after First World War. City of Cities is a post-apocalyptic post adventure showcasing what happens to culture when civilization ceases to exist. Monitor Celestra is reenactment of a Battlestar Galactica, uh, Battlestar Galactica world in a real life destroyer in Sweden. In Sweden. Chris Live is about four to five hundred adults, people like you, gathering in a forest or a field to fight out imaginary battles, full contact, full armor, full action. Fight Club is creating a magic circle when you can play with violence. Uh, in a safe way, with only few selected people. Just a Little Loving is about the New York gay scene in the 80s and the spread of HIV. It's about love, it's about death, and it's about desire. Inside Hamlet is a reenactment of famous Shakespearean play in real life, Elsinore Castle. College of Wizardry is a world-famous magic school located here in Poland, not too far away, and they're still accepting new students. Fairweather Manor is going back to the England in 1914 and exploring the social injustice be in between uh, servants and nobles. Hell on Wheels, a Western LARP based on the TV series of the same name, is taking us back to 1866 with gunmen, Indians, and all the tropes of Westerns. But Svistak, can you tell us a little bit about what LARP is? Now we've come up with a lot of interesting sounding examples. Tell us more. Of course, Klaus. Well, basically, we all know from kindergarten uh, the game of Let's Pretend. So LARP is basically the same, but uh, as adults, we have more lavish costumes and more interesting and engaging plots. LARP is also a form of entertainment because it's always fun to hit each other with safe weapons. And uh, if you're looking for something more serious, LARP has been also uh, put into galleries like British Tate. Uh, and some fancy New York stuff, but who cares about that? Yes. <laughs> uh, and if you're not into that, uh, storytelling and uh, reenacting social roles uh, can be used as an important self-development tool when you can learn about yourself, about social processes, about other people. And honestly, we all know LARP-like activities, like improvisational theater, like whose line is it anyway, or wrestling. The reason LARP can do all these things is because LARP is physical. You're there with your own body. Imagine reading a book about a lumberjack in the forest. I can see some of you already picturing that in your minds. Now imagine watching a documentary about it or some film where the main character is a lumberjack. Broke back lumberjack or something like that. Now imagine being the lumberjack for three days. Which of these three experiences do you think is going to keep in your body the most? Which of them is going to be the most visceral? and it's going to be the one that you remember the most. Well, LARP is social. It's something we do with other people. Of course, it's easy to pretend that you're somebody else alone, 
Sometimes you do it, sometimes you put yourself into a closet at home and pretend to be an alien not coming out of the closet. But it quickly gets boring. LARP is extremely social, it's something we do with each other, and it's something that creates extremely strong bonds, just like traveling or spending a long time at school together, or even going to the military and trying to kill other people. LARP is mental. We build up these imaginary worlds in our heads. If I tell you now that you're in reality the crew of an alien spaceship hurtling toward Earth, and we're going to decide whether we're going to nuke it or not. Most of it's going to happen up here because we're not really nuking anybody, but it can still be interesting. And most of all, LARP is emotional because the brain can't really distinguish between fake emotions and real ones. It can't distinguish between make-believe worlds and what we call consensus reality, the thing you're in right now. If Svistak and I play best friends for three days, we're going to have a strong bond based on that, even though we did it as characters and not as ourselves because emotions are real even when the stories are fake. LARP also uses all five senses. If you watch a movie, you can hear it, you can see it, you can't touch it, not yet at least. You can't feel it, and unless you're really strange and have the weirdest TV in the world, you can't taste it. You can taste a LARP, you can feel it, you can touch it, you can smell it, and you can definitely see it. One of the things LARP has in common, or one thing that uh, also shares these five senses is another popular activity that most of you are aware of, if not necessarily fans of. It's sex, it's quite popular. But Svistak, if it's all so good, why doesn't everybody LARP? Are there any reasons not to? It all starts when you find a web page on the internet and then you're not really sure if this even exists and what is this. Uh, then you wonder that you just don't understand it or uh, that you can't act. And this is a first common misconception. You're not an actor, you're co-creator of a beautiful story and everything what you will do will be right because you're the uh, director of what is happening. Uh, you might wonder that you don't have a costume or that it will be awkward, <laughs> honestly, and that your friends would laugh. Uh, and then when you're there, you don't really know what's going on. Uh, or what are the rules, is there any manual, uh, or that you're just going to look silly. Uh, and of course, this is, uh, for me, those are just excuses made not to try uh, something new because you're afraid. And I strongly believe that LARP, it's maybe not for everyone, but it's for most of us. And don't let fear keep you from trying new experiences. And Klaus. What are the reasons to LARP? I'm glad you asked that question, Svista. <laughs> First of all, LARP provides us with alibis. It lets us have experiences that we don't have access to in our normal lives. I don't have a big chance of being a Russian submarine captain in 1963. And I have an even harder chance of being a teen mom at a high school in a comedy drama. I can do that with LARP. It gives us agency. It gives us a feeling of being in control of something and making choices that matter, even if they're choices in fiction. The same is true for video games. This is just so much stronger. Whether you're a mafia boss pretending to lord it over the other mafia families and deciding who dies and who lives, it may be in a fiction, but it still feels real, and it's still your decisions that matter. LARP is participatory art instead of spectator art. You don't look at something going on on a stage. You're on the stage, you're part of the story. It's co-creation instead of consumerism. Of course, it's nice to just relax on the, on the sofa and watch some TV, maybe some Jersey Shore or any other kind of interesting, intelligent TV that young people these days watch. But for me personally, I'd rather co-create than consume the culture of others, at least some of the time. Then some people will say, oh, but I don't want to be an elf or a mafia boss or a spaceship captain or all the other weird stuff you mentioned. There are many styles and subject matters. For every idea, somebody's made a LARP about it. There are LARPs about prisons. There are LARPs about love. There are LARPs about friendship. There are LARPs about enemies. There are LARPs about hate. There are LARPs that teach you things. There are LARPs that just want to entertain you. The good ones do both. To sum it up, you can read the movie. You can create images in your mind based on the words. And if they're good words, you'll be immersed. You'll leave this world behind for a moment and you get swallowed into the book. You can watch the movie. You can hear it. You can get astounded at how visceral and nice it is visually, but you live the LARP. You're inside it, and that makes a hell of a difference. Svistak, what about the future? What about it? When LARP started in Poland 25 years ago, uh, as this year's Polish LARP conference stated, uh, it was rather small. There was only few uh, social gatherings, 
Uh, and right now we have uh, around 10,000 participants uh, shattered around all the all over the Poland, all over the biggest cities. Uh, we have numerous groups you can join and try it by yourself. And this is only Poland. Uh, in Germany, there are several conventions which are uh, gathering several thousands, ten thousands of people every time, like big m movie or music festivals. We're seeing a growth in ambition. When I started, before she was born, we took a public school, it's true. We took a public school and we pretended it was a fantasy village filled with magicians and villains and thieves and that sort of thing that belong in a fantasy village. It was a public school. You had to sleep next to the kind of fourth grade student projects. It wasn't really that impressive. Our next project together is that at Zamek Książ, which it's definitely pronounced wrong, but which is the third largest castle in Poland. It's a majestic 13th, 14th, 15th century castle and it's gonna play host to 180 vampires in October this year. It's a little bit more impressive than the public school. Uh, LARP also grow in impact. Uh, it can be used uh, as an education tool, it can be used in team building, uh, and uh, it's uh, through that it becomes an excellent tool to educate people about uh, youth development uh, or uh, to promote feminism or eradicate racism. LARP is also growing in recognition. The man you see at the bottom right corner is the Bishop of Roskilde Cathedral in Denmark. The Danish church makes use of this. Mainstream media is catching on to that there's something about this. Some of our stuff has gotten viral media attention in the past couple of years. People are getting a feel for, hey, this actually exists and it's quite interesting. In the middle you see Sophie as Jesus in a cathedral in Roskilde because of course we wanted female Jesuses, sparking another debate. Uh, you may not know it yet, but you're in a golden age of LARP. And we hope you learned something. And now, for the grand finale. Clap.